everybody, and welcome to podcast number eight from the Girls on Games. Thank you very much, very much for joining us this evening. Um, before we start, I want to uh, introduce you to our cast of characters we have in, on here this evening. First off, my uh, other half, Catherine Smith Damien. Hello. We got Catherine Ashley in her uh, Super Smash Hello. Bros. mashup T-shirt. <laughs> That's gonna get us some hits. <laughs> we got oh, Steffi with her awesome red headset. Hello. We've got our technical producer extraordinaire, Mr. Simon. And we've Push got to Devin. Talk. Push to talk. Uh oh. <laughs> Push to talk set up. And of course, we've got Devin hanging out with us again this evening. Hey, Devin. Greetings. Hey. So before we start, we just want to let you know, um, we've got uh, our wonderful Allie, known as 8-Bit Blonde, hanging out in chat. You can talk with her. Um, we want her to get well soon. She's uh, recovering from a little bit of uh, wisdom teeth surgery. And we want to send out a belated happy birthday to Craig Coben. Happy birthday! <laughs> so, I've actually been a little AFK this past week because I've had my family up visiting. So I want to know, what have you guys been playing? Kat, SD, what have you been playing? I finished Dragon Age Inquisition. I'm free! Lies. You can never finish the game. <laughs> I'm free. Oh, I finished the main story. I cleared more of the option. Like, I could have re-rolled another character, romanced another character, and <laughs> choose the Templars instead of the Mage. But at that point, I was like, I have a life to live. Um, so I've actually been watching on YouTube a lot of, like, the alternate storylines. So I don't have to spend another 90 hours on that game. Um, other than that, I blitzed through Grow Home, mm -hmm. that experimental game from uh, Ubisoft, which I thought was going to be more of a puzzle game. It's actually more of a strategy and, uh, and reflex kind of game. Like, you grow the plant, and like as you climb, you get into like really, really high, and sometimes you just got to come down, and you just like jump down, and then you got to use your jet pack and your parachute, and then you got to like just latch onto the plant to it. Like, move around. It's weird. But it was good. I liked it. Sweet. Um, Kat, Ashley, I know you were uh, tinkering a little bit in the Battlefield Hardline beta. How'd it go? Uh, I didn't play that much, actually. Just a few hours. Um, it was good. I don't. I didn't like... I liked Heist a lot, but the problem... There was a bit of buggies going on in it. Uh, well, that's the whole like, point of a beta. <laughs> ugh, no, but like, really, I was trying to jump over a railing. Like, it still scars me, man. I was trying to jump over a railing, and my character kept doing the same movement over and over and over and over. And this was uh -oh. on the Xbox One, by the way. So, yeah, I kind of found it, like, buggy a bit, but... Um, Battlefield's not my favorite uh, competitive first-person shooter, so I'm pretty partial on it. But it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, I'm sure for those who actually um, really enjoy the series, will probably like it. And Heist, honestly, is fucking fun as hell, so... Sweet. I think Simon's been playing it as well, right? He's a pc -er. yeah. Yeah, I have, I have been playing it on a PC. It's, it's really fun. I'm having a good time. Um, like I told, uh, I told a couple of people earlier, I've been playing a lot of Hotwire, actually, which is really cool. It's kind of like um, like point capture, but the captures, the, 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 what you have to capture, it's vehicles, so that you're always moving while capturing the point. So that's really interesting. You're kind of like chasing other points that you've been captured. Anyway, it's, it's really interesting. It's really fun. Um, I'm not sure still about the whole freaking buy the guns that you can use thing. Um, oh, yeah, so it's like that's... a pay to win sort of feature? No, well, no, because it's not that you can like pay to unlock it. It's that you have to pay in-game money to unlock the guns. Okay. And I always thought that that was really stupid. Like Call of Duty does that too. That mm -hmm. where like you don't you start with shitty guns. And then you have to play with shitty guns to be able to grow up and, and get better guns and get better items. And I thought that's a, that's the stupidest system that there can be. So that's kind of dumb. You know, I, I the, the starting gun is really horrible. And then, you know, I looked up on the internet which gun is the best and that kind of stuff. So I was able to unlock those right away and then be able to, to, to actually enjoy the game. But I feel that it's so stupid that, that they implemented that still. And that's $69.99 price point. <laughs> So how would you have rather they had done the unlocking the guns? Like you win it, sort of like you do in Destiny, or you stumble across it, or... No, like you have all the guns. That's just it. Like you start the game, 
and then Literally. you have all the guns there available for you and then depending on your play style depending on what you prefer to do then you can choose different gun different attachment like mm -hmm. i love putting the infrared attachment on my guns some people prefer having the uh, zoomed in scope or whatever so you can choose exactly what you want to do but that they put everything that you have to you know unlock money and then play and then you get to get better guns and it's kind of i don't know I, I guess they're trying to make an rpg out of it i don't fucking know but i feel it's stupid Mm -hmm. Other than that, yeah. it's really fun. Other than that, it's really fun game. Okay. <laughs> and you are you enjoying it using mouse and keyboard? Oh, of course, of course. Much better than anything else. I would not play a game on console. I tried playing Halo once and I cried. So, <laughs> no, that cannot be done ever for me. I respect the, I like Catherine and, and all of you like console shooter gamers. I don't know how you do it. Mm -hmm. I would get frustrated. Like, for me, I have to use the mouse to get to the guy's head. Like, with those no. fucking joysticks, you have, like, no control. Like, I so terrible with the mouse. So terrible. It's embarrassingly terrible. It's a very I interesting dichotomy that we have going on between Holy the two. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Fuck Hold that, on, I'm getting right, some... Uh... Mm -hmm. Alright, sorry, go ahead. I'm getting some issues on my end. Go ahead. That's okay. How about you, Devin? Uh, what have you been up to? You playing Battlefield Hardline or playing something else? Uh, Ali was actually kind enough to give me a Neverwinter beta. Oh, and uh, I played that most of this weekend, and before that, I was playing uh, Far Cry Four. Still, I'm mm. I'm completely obsessed with that game. Oh Hardly yeah. So, are you done? Uh no, no, I'm taking my sweet time. Okay, so are you a completionist? Or are you trying to do every single slot, uh, clear everything out? No, not really. Just um, with a lot of games, I find that I just kind of end up rushing towards and rushing through everything to kind of get mm -hmm. to the end of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, but with Far Cry, I'm just, you know, I'm taking my time. I'm not trying to drive from one point to the other. I tend to walk there so that I can experience as much as possible. Uh, just not, not really trying to be a completionist, but also not really rushing through it at any point in time either. Mm, okay. We lost um, Effie. Sorry. Oh, no. That's too bad. Yeah. That's too bad. Maybe we'll try and get her back of course, on here. live. Of course. <laughs> it's all good. Jesus. It's all good. We'll try and get her back. Um, oh. So she says she can see us. Um, sorry, oh, I lost there my we train go. of thought. Oh, she's here back. Here we go. Is she back? <laughs> totally Yay! Lost train of <laughs> Live podcasting, people. Devin, what's been mm. the craziest animal that you've encountered so far in Far Cry 4? Um, or the most brutal one to try and kill? I'm... I, I kind of I'm tempted to say honey badgers that everyone else, but really the rhinos. The rhinos are a pain in the ass because I tend to use bow and arrow, and it takes uh. I think anywhere between 11 to 16 arrows to take down a rhino, Ooh. and get two skins, which means you basically end up trying to shoot them with assault weapons and spend way too long hunting them. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they they tend to be the most brutal. They'll they'll charge you, and when they knock you down, they keep hitting you while you're on the ground, so you can't get up and recover health. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're the most annoying to deal with, definitely. Hmm. Steffi, how about you? What have you been playing? Um, I've just been like spending all my time searching for amiibos and reevaluating how sad my life has become looking for them. <laughs> so, <laughs> did you see Ali's uh, post about uh, mod uh, awesomely modded amiibos? We have it up on girlsongames.ca, just oh. posted today. Oh, you go I'm see some of them. There's this one that some dude took all the time to like tape off Mario's like flaming I don't know what it is flaming ball of fire um and paint him all gold like it's pretty amazing I really want that one and there's an amazing uh dark cartoon link there as well so yeah go check that out on girlsongames.ca um Allie did awesome work on that I and did what, pick what up um yeah I've been looking for like the new releases uh I can't find Rosalina? Son no I can't find her I can't find Sonic and I can't find Mega Man but I did pick up Divinity Original Sin because a lot of you guys were, didn't you include it as like game of the year, a few of you guys in the yeah, roundup post? Yeah? Okay. For sure. I thought that I would buy it because it came so highly recommended. Mm. It's a really great question. game, but it's, it's, it's easy to die and start over in oh. this game. It's, it's, it could be complicated. It, it can be complicated, but it's really fun though. It's really fun. I think you'll like it. When you, you die, like it, do you, RPG. like, start over, or does it, how does it work when you die? Uh, no, you can actually continue, but, like, you're going to have issues. <laughs> oh, no. But, but I mean, it, it's complicated at first because there's, there's a lot of options. A bit, like, I started playing D&D &D a couple of years ago, 
and when you start playing there's like this fucking intense way of information that you need to memorize and understand and I felt that the game was a bit like that at the beginning where it's really they throw shit at you constantly and you have to like kind of keep up and sometimes go back and reread what they were saying to understand but once you get into the groove of it I think yeah I think you'll enjoy it it's a really fun game oh nice excited <laughs> so here's my question Ros- Rosalina Rosalina am I pronouncing that correctly she is um, a character that is only sold in Target, but Target's leaving us in Canada. Oh, so are, are we going to get a chance to get her? Because I imagine they're not bringing in new stock because they started discounting oh. it all. I Has heard anybody that, seen anything? Um, I heard that they did get some in at EB Games, but they sold out instantly. So okay. I don't know. <laughs> Has anybody been Nintendo to a Target? Not having to. It would be stupid if, if they didn't. Yeah. Has oh. anybody seen any discounts at uh, Target? 10%? 10%. 10% 10% fucking percent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, most of it's at 10%. Um, I want a damn toaster. The toasters were 10% off. <laughs> yes, okay. So <laughs> Catherine wants a toaster. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to get that toaster. <laughs> I don't know how she's living without a toaster. It's, it's like a gamer person's table. You put the bread in, it cooks it while you play. It comes back, you put peanut butter on it, and you're uh, good. I believe in the magic I don't understand. of the broil. I don't no, no, understand. No, but uh, I sent her a hot dog making machine uh, earlier, and she, she, she was freaking out. Like the one from Sky Mall? The yeah, magazine. the one that you put your sausages and like, and then it yeah. bread and it cooks everything at once. I want, I want three of those, please. I want one of those too. <laughs> That'd be awesome. So yeah, I'm in the middle of uh, Majora's Mask on uh, the new Nintendo 3DS, and I should have some info up on it shortly. Um, gonna be taking a little bit of a spin, not a straight up review. I'm thinking about talking about what I think Nintendo did right or wrong with uh, making this HD remake, which. Uh, so far, I'm really enjoying. So, probably be spun a little bit more on the love than the dislike. But yeah, we've had, speaking of Zelda, we've had some pretty good uh, news this week, or rumor mill, I guess, since it's not totally confirmed. But the internet was ablaze when uh, it was announced, or there was rumor of their uh, Netflix potentially making a Legend of Zelda show live action. Now, crew, what do you think? Give me your two cents. You love it? You hate it? You want I, some? You, I hate you, you, it. Hate, hate it. it? All right. Catherine, why do you hate it? Why are you the Debbie Downer here? Okay. <laughs> well, we were discussing this before, but honestly, it brings back memories from fucking Super Mario Bros. movie from the 90s. And as much <laughs> as I I love, you know, John Leguizamo, because he is... No, he was he was terrible in that. He was okay. much better in uh, To Wong Fu, and just saying. And it's going to be Niezer again, which is stupid for everyone <laughs> I don't think English. so. I don't, I don't know. So. I don't. I don't. And and like I was saying before too. I mean, we have to recreate a humongous world. And Kat, before you said we can just they can just be shipped off to um, New, New Zealand, Zealand where they film. But the budget Lord of the for Rings, that, Game of Thrones. The budget for that is humongous. Can Netflix deliver on it? Is it going to be cheesy as fuck? Anyways, that's my thing. I don't know. Anyways. Well, they could do it in like maybe six episodes instead of thirteen. They could, do, they could do the Sherlock. They're going to milk it. They're not going to do for six. Listen, it's coming with the name, you know, Legend of Zelda. They're not going to be like, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll do a fan service six episodes. No, they're going to milk that shit for 13 episodes, 10 episodes, whatever, a season. And I have a feeling it's going to be shitty. Well, they Thanks. could do like Sherlock and do like three long, they won't like do that. almost mini movie. Well, you don't know. It's for Netflix. TV movies. Series. I don't know. Most of Netflix's shows are what, 13 episodes on yeah, average? That's, they're that's original? Traditional. Yeah. That's what I feel like they're gonna do. I don't know. Mm. Anyways, that's my I don't know. I mean, so far Netflix shows have been like good. almost all of them so far have had very good reviews and very good critics. Like Orange Is the New Black, Hustle Cards. That's people good. have been going crazy about that. The new Daredevil looks really good. So, yeah. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I'm I'm still on because it's gonna be like the first fantasy kind of. Yeah. We'll see, but I don't know. I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of uh, kind of excited to see what's gonna be what it's gonna be like. Mm. Shit, I'm, Tina Tina Fey was writing a comedy for NBC, and she's doing it for Netflix. Yeah, now. exactly. Mm. No, yeah. no, Netflix outright outright said they want to be the new HBO. They want to produce their own shows and make their own stuff. And mm. I think that's that's great. It's really good. It's it's awesome that a service like that comes out with their own show. It's really cool. This is, I guess, well, except for the Daredevil one. This is the first major like brand that it's mm-hmm. taking on like they have was a hemlock grove uh orange is the new black house of cards that it arrested development okay true well oh, it's wow. not ma- it, 
we we can't even compare Zelda and Arisa development though. Yeah, there's there it's like apples it's and oranges apart. and grapes and dogs and cats and yes. <laughs> I know Devin wasn't super happy. Devin, <laughs> <laughs> can I, I baseball him now or later? I just had to, when we were talking about this early earlier prior to chat when I like prefaced everybody like this is what we're going to be talking about so think about it a bit. He started to rant and I shut him up because I didn't want him. <laughs> so Devin, um, here is your floor. <laughs> <laughs> too, too many questions right now. Are are we doing it during kind of like uh, the Majora's Mask area where Link is young? Are we doing it during the Wind Waker episode? Uh, each one has different characters with different personalities. Link doesn't have a personality. He quite literally is a silent protagonist. Mm -hmm. So the question is, um, you know, what does his voice sound like? No matter what, they're going to piss somebody off if they make him talk or if they give him an attitude or if they give him anything because everyone always projects themselves on Link. Remember that cartoon with the attitude? It's just, <laughs> excuse me, princess. <laughs> oh, my God, no. No, 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 can't do it. But uh, I don't know. There's just there's too many questions and just not I, – I don't see them pulling it off as uh, – as anything, as anything live action, it's just, um, I, I mentioned it before, but one of my favorite book series is called The Sword of Truth, and they created a show called um, Legend of the Seeker, and just the first episode, like the first 10 minutes, threw the entire first book <laughs> off, and just went, oh, so it's technically speaking the same book, but no, it's not, and they just completely destroyed everyone's dreams. <laughs> Uh, and I, I, like I have horrible, I, I have horrible fears. It's going to be that. Yeah, again. but was that on Netflix? No, it was on uh, ABC. Uh, I don't know. ABC? I can't remember. I, don't know. I think it was on ABC. I just know that it aired on Saturdays and no one watched it. <laughs> <laughs> True Blood. They did the first book verbatim as the uh, the first season. Yeah. After that, they totally devi deviated. Yeah, and it went. Mmm. Yeah, I kind of stopped. Dexter watching. also the first season. season is the first book exactly word for word almost. Yeah, and then they go off the kilter and they lose track. Yeah. So okay, Steph, I haven't heard from you yet. Thoughts? Do you want to see it? Do you not want to see it? Are you holding out hope? I think yeah. the only way they could make it work is if they like chose something where they can have a lot of creative liberties. Like if they decided to do the whole entire series based off of the seven years that Link is trapped away. And we see what happens to Hyrule when everything's like turning all dark and terrible. That could maybe work. They wouldn't even need a link and they wouldn't make anyone angry that way. Yeah, but think of it like if they're going to announce a Legend of Zelda series and there's no link. Yeah, the people are going to be pissed off there too, you know? You can, you can well, show up after. Half the people yeah. think that Link is Zelda. So, I mean. Yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, that, yeah. that could oh, that's, that's adorable. Spend, <laughs> spend what, the first two seasons in development at the end of the second season, like you see Link walk out of the Temple of Time, at which point you've mm -hmm. already built a story that might be able to work. Yeah. But you'd yes. have to have a really strong cast. And mm. uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm still and, not sure. Too many questions. I mean, of the three timelines do you take? Do you make yeah. an entirely different fourth timeline? I would... <laughs> I would make something completely new, to be honest, because, like, when you're working from a book or from a video game, like, so many people are going to nitpick. Mm -hmm. Like, honestly, the the forums for the Lord of the Rings MMO was, like, just a bunch of nerds nitpicking at shit that, like, Tolkien would have wanted that way. I was like, <laughs> listen, make your dwarf, go <laughs> run around, and leave me alone. But, I mean... <laughs> There are success stories. Like, I'm a huge Sherlock Holmes fan. Like, mm -hmm. read all the books and everything. And I love the new series. And the new series is not the books. It's just they sure. grab Easter egg. Like, the mm -hmm. whole episode about the Reichenbach fall. You know, they, they call him the Reichenbach hero. But, like, in the original story, they go to a fall called the Reichenbach fall. And he falls from, like, down the water. And they turned that whole thing into, like, his suicide, like, jumping off a building and everything. But if you've read the books, it's not, like, it's not close to the book so that if there's a small difference, you're going to be angry. You're just going to, it's something completely different. And when they give you that Easter egg, you're just like, <gasps> I know this because I'm a huge nerd. 
Mm. And you get happy about it. So, like, I love how... I don't think they could do, like, modern-day Hyrule with, like, fucking cell phones and shit. But... But that would still be kind of cool. Would be fun. Yeah. Oh I like my that God. idea. I like that Holy idea. Holy shit. Uh, I, I, I can see Devin dying right now. I can see him dying. <laughs> like, at the moment. Like, I have like, so have like, so like, like hey, like listen. That. Not now. I'm texting <laughs> Zelda, <laughs> telling her where, asking her where Ganon is, so we can go and save her. You sure? It's God Zelda only knows. That'd be like his notification to? tone. Oh my God! But Millennial here. Link, <laughs> Millennial Link, trying to get his Link. startup off the ground. <laughs> oh my God! Jesus Christ! So but how do you? How do you how do you depict the dungeons in a television series? Like, does he go questing? Is it like how they did? Like, Lord of the Rings makes more sense because it's almost like they, they have the script there for you. But like, mm. the story in Zelda or the Legend of Zelda and all the things is all wrapped around where you go and get stuff in the different dungeons. How do you do that in a TV show? Well, I guess it depends on the angle they want to take. I mean, if they take the political angle of the of the Hyrule world. Then they can, you know, build the intrigue around that rather than adventuring and that kind of stuff. Because yeah, that could I could see that being hard to uh, to see. But I don't know, like, what could they could they base the story on? No idea. No. All right. So with that being said, if you were to cast said TV series or Netflix series, who would you make Zelda? Who would you make Link? Who would you make Ganon? Did you guys put any thought into this? Who would well, you want to see as couple. Tingle? If you I look at if you look at the latest movies, apparently you need Barton Freeman and Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> oh, well, right, I mean, God. what could Anything. he play? I'm just saying you know, that to be to be cheeky. Oh, okay. Can uh, have... can we make Wimbledon tennis match like the giant owl? Yes. Oh, then he died. Then the first episode is just him repeating whatever the fuck he just <laughs> said. Yes. Oh, that's hilarious. That's well, I've been. There's been a few like websites, Reddit. Um, as we talk about it, Twitter has had their two cents um, about who they think should be the cast. Mm -hmm. um, and The Verge actually has a, probably, it was the first one I stumbled across and probably the most interesting that I've seen so far. Because right off the bat, they're going to do a little gender bending and they want Massey Williams as young Link. So mm -hmm. everybody knows Massey Williams uh, from Game of Thrones. It's actually pretty funny. She was in that NES, like, teens play old oh, NES yeah. games or whatever mm -hmm. and she was like what the hell is this so to have her play Link would be pretty freaking funny Yeah. Um, then she would be young Link and then counterpart to that they put Natalie Dormer as who you know from the Hunger, Hunger Games as adult Link mm. so you know a bit of gender bending I don't know why they went down the road they're not the only ones that went down the road of casting oh. a female for, the, for a male part but it's interesting here's another cool one now, if I can pronounce her name correctly, it's the girl that's in the Annie movie. Um, Quevenzhane. Que can anybody pronounce that? Wallace is her, her last name. As young Zelda, she was one. In, she was in. Uh, they want to see her. Uh, she's a, an Academy Award winner. Holy cow! But I, she's the one in the Annie movie. And then Antonia Thomas as adult Zelda, and you probably know her from the TV show in Britain called Misfits. So that's kind of different, changing up races a bit. So I think uh, The Verge kind of went a little crazy. They have Michael Shannon as uh, Ganondorf. Lawrence Fishburne as the King of Hyrule. That's kind of different. Okay. Um, Jenny Slate as Navi. <laughs> Zoe Saldana as Midna. Oh. Beyonce as the Fairy Queen. Queen B. Margaret Chow is the great fairy of magic. Jesus. Can you imagine? Mar can you imagine what a scene that would be with like Margaret Chow like coming out of the water in the temple and then just spinning <laughs> down and it's just like the cone boobs and the face and the crazy hair. That and, the like, and the laugh. Oh my god! Laugh. That would be <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be hilarious. They have That's Nick, our fourteen-year-old Catherine. <laughs> they have Nick Offerman as Draunia. Drown. Darnina, a oh, man I can't freaking pronounce names from Zelda. Oh, it's the guy terrible. The Goron. Yeah, the yeah. Goron. Darunia. And Martin Short as Tingle. Yeah, that's you have yeah, to. That's freaking. You have hard. to cast Martin Short as yeah. Tingle. <laughs> all right. Um, well, I, I guess it, it all depends on which which universe game they're going with. Yes. Yeah. Another one with some gender bending is uh, one of the um, editors at 
at uh, Destructoid. He's a featured editor, as Stephen Hansen. Uh, he <laughs> wants he wants Kristen Stewart as Zelda. What? That yeah. I can kind of see after so that, that was a joke, though. He put a picture of Link. Yeah. Beside it. That had to be a joke. That it, had to be a joke, because I read that, too, and I was like, did he Did he just call fucking Link Zelda? But, and then uh, to continue with the Snow White and the Huntsman, he's got Charlize Theron as the princess. <coughs> that, no. And they said Nothing will never get those people. And then he put Danny DeVito as Tingle. <laughs> oh, dear God. <laughs> Right now, of, of what they put I up. Am... like, Danny DeVito, Danny and DeVito in green is... spandex, green oh, tight no. spandex. Oh, <laughs> okay, it has to be a joke. Oh, oh Lord. What are you um, doing? other good ones that they've got here. I'm actually not familiar with many of these other actors, but they kind of picked actors that like matched up. Uh, looks wise um, mm. with them. Let's see what else we got. Someone else from Destructoid said they want Ryan Gosling as Link. That's kind of like a I just like Ryan, Ryan Gosling, Gosling so. and everything. So um, William Defoe as that. Gandorf. <laughs> Aubrey Plaza as Zelda. No. A horse as a pona. <laughs> <laughs> and Morgan Freeman like as Nad as Navi. Um, on IGN Very they had a they have a uh, forum chat going and someone says they want Jason Momoa as Gandorf, which would work pretty good. Actually, as Gandorf, I was seeing because like he's kind of he's tall and and strong. Yep. I would see the uh, Rory McCann, the guy who plays the Hound in Game of Thrones. Yep. Ooh, I well, think I that too. he would be really good as Gandorf because he's really tall and he's got like that kind of look. Mm. I, I think it would be really good, and honestly, for for Zelda slash Sheik, I, mm. I, I would love to see Zelda Williams do it. Zelda Wim Williams has to be in the game or movie. Oh or, man, or she just has point. to be. Uh, she yeah, has totally. to do something in that that series. She has to. But by far, my favorite <laughs> on the IGN post is from uh, Legend of Midna, and his his like little quote under it is almost not a noob and he wrote morgan freeman as navi shiloh labeouf as link megan fox as zelda directed by michael bay and asked to direct it bay replied i can't wait to bomb some dodongos oh my god <laughs> well you know there is some bombs in zelda i guess it just blow can... shit up imagine <laughs> legend of zelda as a full-on action like explosion like how do you throw a transport truck in there blowing up how can they do that <laughs> Uh, well, I was seeing some good suggestions in chat. Well, there's our friend Voice. He said uh, he agreed with somebody else. Sorry, I missed you. You're, the chat's moving too quick. Said uh, Orlando Bloom would be great as Link. Yeah. I guess he's got the look. But uh, mm -hmm. Mike DVR96, mm -hmm. Leah's fiance, said Neil Patrick Harris as Link. That's actually not a bad idea. Yeah, Interesting cool. choice. He, he can rock the green, uh, the green tights. He yeah, can totally. That. He totally. would rock anything. Fuck. Dude he'd be cool. hilarious, and if we wanted to add in a musical number, he'd be gung ho too. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I actually think that Travis Fimmel would actually do very good as Link, especially if they did Silent Protagonist, because uh, he's he's got that very overbearing, strong presence thing going for him. So, uh, I mean, you see it when he plays in Vikings. I think he could do very well as Link as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be entertaining. Anybody else got uh, any ideas? Okay, let's see. <laughs> what else have we got? I'm looking to see if there's any other really good ones right off the bat. So, some other ones um, from Ghost on, on Twitter. Um, Link is James Franco. Zelda is Zoe Deschanel. Ganon is Gary oh. Busey. I love that. <laughs> mm, oh, but, oh, wait. Tingle is Steve Bucet Buchetti. Yes! yes! Oh, my God, yes. That would be so good. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I love Steve Buscemi. Actually. An old man is Nicolas Cage. I think that's pretty funny. An old man. <laughs> really funny. Uh, I actually kind of like Steve Buscemi. I think his yeah. acting's fantastic. I, I think he'd be wasted on Tingle. But uh, I, think, I think a good Ganondorf pick would be Hugo Weaving. I, I would pay money to see him as Ganondorf. He would be very he, Yeah, awesome. he plays the best. Yeah, he's good. Um, so, him, Hugo. you know how you mentioned Zelda Williams? Well, someone on Twitter, uh, Arthur Effect, 
Um, he tweeted, seriously, though, how has Zelda Williams not been cast as Zelda already? And she responded, as long as I get to play Sheik for a bit, I'm totally game. <laughs> so exactly. there you go. Sign that girl up. Yeah, no, she needs to be part of it. She needs to. No, very nice. So I want uh, to check now and see if there's any questions in the chat. I forgot to mention earlier that uh, we're totally open to taking questions in chat. Um, right off the bat, uh, I know we had one from our buddy Craig. He wants to know, what game have you guys rage quit? Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hmm. man. What games did we rage quit? I've rage quit in Counter Strike many times. Yeah. Many a times. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> Have you ever broken a keyboard or broken a controller? Uh, a broken mouse. a manette? Yes. A mouse, yeah. Hands down, I whipped it across the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've had slapped a mouse oh. hard and broke. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was I, nice. I, I don't rage quit. I, I put the controller down with authority. <laughs> no. That's too damn you, game! It's <laughs> <laughs> too calm and collected. I'm coming back to you later. <laughs> Just... <laughs> I, I, I made someone rage quit playing Mario Kart. We really? Playing Mario Kart 64. I... I I don't forget if it was battle or if it was of um, it was just regular race, and he got so fucking mad, and he was like his own Nintendo sixty four. He pulled him it out and like threw it behind his head, and like the sixty four flew in front of us, and the man it exploded Shit. behind. And I was like, all right, you know, I I, I think I'm done. Then I just got up and I left, and I, I don't think I've ever talked to him ever since. Oh. <laughs> That yes. was, yeah, that was intense. I remember still. It was my front, my neighbor in front of my house where I used to live before. Ooh, I just had a flashback. Anybody else I've, rage um, quit? I, I've put down games in frustration, but like not, not like rage quit, throw a controller across the room. I've never damaged anything that I own, uh, thankfully. I think the only time I've done something that could be considered rage quitting is... Um, well, there's there's one time when Aaron and I were playing a video game, and there's there's an area that was too hard for me, and of course she was lost, so just screw it. Um, but I went over to a friend's house for my birthday once, and we played Mario Party. Oh, and <laughs> the game that ends friendships. Today's Devin's oh. birthday. We are fucking with Devin, and just everybody would steal my stars and my coins and everything. <laughs> there was one guy. I think he had like 15 stars at the end, and eventually, I just kind of dropped the control. I'm like, all right, you know what? Fuck this. Fuck you. I'm out. And just walked oh, out of his house. Oh my god. <laughs> no, it was it was not a good day. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah, that game so, didn't end friendships. <laughs> yeah, that game is uh, very rage inducing. <laughs> Steph, have you ever rage quit a game? Uh, uh, maybe We Bleed Pixels. That game really annoyed me. Oh, it's a fun game, though. Yeah, I, I was just really, really bad at it, so I just couldn't <laughs> handle it anymore. <laughs> to put it away. I know, uh, if Mike D's still in chat, um, we were almost ready to chuck the controller out of the window at Deathstroke in Arkham mm. Origins, Batman Arkham Origins. That boss, holy shit. I even, like, I was doing it on normal difficulty, couldn't do it. Made a new game on easy. Sped run through the whole thing. Got to that point again and still had trouble. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? Yeah, and then I'd pass the controller to Mike. He'd play and then he'd sc scream in frustration, give back to me, and I'd try again. Yeah, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't much fun. It wasn't much fun. Made it past it later. Um, we've Jesus. got more questions. Gray Fox 1990 uh let's see when do you think metal gear solid 5 will come out the phantom pain that is any any ideas anybody will care to drop a wager are we no betting idea. men and women here today i, I honestly the, the last metal gear i played i think was two Gosh. or three it's been a while since i played a metal gear game mm -hmm. no so nobody wants know. to bet do you think you're gonna get it this year do we think we're gonna get it next year I would be surprised oh, we got it at the end of this year, like November. Did they even? Sh yeah, they they showed the trailer at E3, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Simon's doing some sleuthing there now. Yeah, look at this. Uh, <laughs> I, I would vote October, November, probably because Ground Zeroes came out in March, what? and they've never really gone. They've never really put out two games in one year. I don't think so. It's mm -hmm. it's going to be a little bit past the one year point. I think. 
We get another question from Craig. The man has lots of questions for us. Why do games even need to be made into live action shows and movies in the first place? Seriously. Money. That's a good question. Money. Money. Yeah. Try to get dollar dollar bills. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess, you know, movies, movies always looking for new IPs to tackle. And if they, I guess they're a lot less risky if they've already got a fan base like comic books, uh, like books, like video games. Um, the key is to not fuck them up like they've no. done with so many others. Oh, uh, most of them are I mean, terrible though. Yeah, we've we've actually been through a run of really good ones. I mean, you look back, you look at, you know, the Marvel movies, the Batman movies. We've been doing pre- pretty good as of late. Um, but getting a video game inspired movie or TV show that's been half decent is kind of touchy. I mean, Resident the, Evil the first movie. Resident that's Evil's have been good. pretty good. Um The Laura Croft games were so our movies oh. were so so, you know, like they weren't terrible. They weren't the Mario movie. You know what I mean? So <laughs> that, that thing gave me Let's nightmares. all judge the okay. 80s, yes. Yeah, the 80s yeah. was a terrible time for, for, uh, for movies. House of the Dead. Things made out of movies. House of the Dead was made or into... Buff, uh, no, uh, Street Fighter 2. Uh, Street Fighter also came out. That was pretty shitty. Oh, Street Remember Fighter with Jacques Van Damme. Van Damme. Van Damme. Yes. <laughs> that was shitty. Remember the amazing Mortal Kombat movies? Oh. Oh yes. House of the Dead was a shitty ass oh movie. I remember seeing that in two thousand and five. Oh House my god! Dead. Speaking of that Mortal Kombat, terrible. did you guys go watch oh, the um, Conan O'Brien prior to the Super Bowl? Yeah. Uh, brought two of the with Lynch and one of the other guys yeah, from Marshall the other team played. Yeah, played against them. Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat's mm-hmm. not out yet. Comes out in March. Mm-hmm. Um, Mortal Kombat Ten, that is, or X, or however X. they want to call it. And uh, yeah. Marshall Lynch's reaction to the first fatality is fucking priceless. <laughs> like, the man, like, you wouldn't expect it. Like, he was totally revolted, and he had to get up and he walked away. He was like, that's not right. Like, because, hey, in Mortal Kombat, the whole point is, like, ridiculous gore for no good reason, right? Yeah. But you'd think he'd know what to expect. But, yeah, we got to see a few fatalities that I hadn't seen before in that, and it was pretty awesome. So, yeah, if you get a chance, you should check that out on YouTube. Um, we've got another question or a comment. Johnny One Lung. That's an interesting name. Do you only have one lung, Johnny? <laughs> Just the one. It's all he Just needs. the one? Okay. It's all he needs. Turning the Zelda show idea on its head. Um, what are some movies or TV shows you'd love to have a game based on? Ooh. Well, Ooh. everybody knows that I'm killing for a Sailor Moon game. Yes. Anybody else? What What else are oh, we so watching right good. now that we'd like to see a game of? I don't watch <sighs> I want a real good for real Star Trek Bridge Commander game. Like the one came out, I think it was like ten or fifteen years ago, and it was it was it was cool. Mm-hmm. I want one that you you're you actually like not unlike Eve Online, where you're your own ship, you're mm-hmm. inside your ship, and then you control you know what you do and where you go, and and not that MMO bullshit. I don't want to play the MMO; it's stupid. Like, really a game where it's single player and that there's a story and you follow the arch of the story, but you're the captain of the ship and you have to make the decision and you have to, you know, control engineering and all that kind of stuff. Mm. That, to me, would be, like, the ultimate nerd geek fantasy game. For sure. Like a, a Star trek Mass Effect? Almost? No, like, like even more... Well, no, because you never actually leave Mass the bridge. Mass Effect? And is no man would you say no man's sky takes a little bit of its ideas from star trek you know like to boldly go where no one has gone before sort of deal probably probably it, it could. Some inspiration, but you know it's i i mean i've barely seen any, any gameplay of that all i've seen is the idea of people going around worlds that look technicolor um but you know that yeah. could that could have flavors of hmm. uh of star trek in there um you got any other ideas cat Death? Well, yeah. Game of Thrones, but they already came out. That tell, um, the Telltale one? I don't yeah. watch many TV shows, to be quite honest with you. And Lord of the Rings, they've done a few of those. I'm really oh, enjoying Star, Space's, few of those. Space's Bitten TV show. I watched last season. I haven't seen the second, seen uh, the that. first episode of uh, season two. I read all the books, too. And I'm really enjoying that. That'd be kind of cool. Aaron, uh, uh, Aaron watched like the first episode of, of Bitten, and she said uh, five minutes in, and she was blushing. Oh, so, yeah? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. A, it's a, Sherlock, yeah. a telltale game of Sherlock. Like um, JK was saying earlier in the chat, that would be good. Mm. 
Steph, you said that uh, Bitten's filmed by your house? Like, yeah, like five minute walk. Oh, really? You That's should cool. come and like try to be on the <laughs> well, show or something. Well, well, we, might be take, we might be taking a visit your direction coming uh, fan expo time. So maybe we will dun, dun, try and be dun. on the set. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> um, anybody else? Ah, I, I, I'm i just waiting to see how the Firefly MMO turns out at this point in time. I mean, the TV shows are like, uh, I love Justified, though, I mean, how they'd be able to turn that into a decent game. I, I get the feeling they'd mess that one up. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a tough question. TV show or a movie that they could adapt into a video game. Has anybody ever watched uh, Deadwood? I have not. Nope. Um, I heard about it. But I've not. Few episodes. Oh my god! I mean, the only real like cowboy s game that we have is Red Dead Redemption. So it'd be kind of nice to have another cowboy style game, um, and especially if it's like from the perspective of like Swearingen, where like beyond the fact that it's like crazy, like well written with like f bombs left, right, and center, which cracks me up. Like just the idea of like you're you're kind of like the king of this town without being the official king. Like he's not the mayor, he's not anything, but he kind of controls everything in town because he runs the saloon. Mm. So that'd be kind of, you know, interesting to see how that plays up. <sighs> All well, right. I, I guess not right now at the moment with the popularity of like na- narrative games like uh, a la Telltale, I guess any Pretty much any show that has a good following could make a great video game. Mm. You know, they did it with Game of Thrones, with Walking Dead. I'm like, I'm a fan of Supernatural, and I, that would be a great fucking Telltale game. So, Telltale makes sense, though, because you're still keeping a small level of interaction with yeah. what you're doing. So, I mean, when you take a TV show and you turn it into a video game, you're adding a level of interaction. Mm-hmm. Whereas where you take a video game and you turn it into a TV show, you're reducing the interaction of the audience. So... Mm-hmm. It's a little weird how that works out then when you're quite literally people be uh, making people be less engaged in the stuff that they normally would be. Mm. Well, I mean, I, I don't think games will ever be able to reproduce the the acting and, and the, you know how how actors play and do their role. I mean, they're getting there, but I think that that's what really gets you into a TV series. That is the story interesting, and are the actors selling it? And I don't think that we're quite there gaming related so that we know that we can actually portray properly whatever's on the screen. I don't think we're there yet. We're close, but we're not there yet. Mm-hmm. We got another question from Johnny One Lug. He wants to know what's the worst level mission in an otherwise great game? Hmm. Oh, I got this one right away. Water Temple. Ocarina of Time. <laughs> Why? Just, I love just... the Water Temple. It was because hard. it's made out of hate and liquid, and that's all that level is. <laughs> on the 64, <laughs> though, on the 3DS, um, it was much better. But on the 64, yeah. They updated it on the 3DS? Well, they what? just made the UI less... Well, one of the main things that I hated about the Water Temple on the 64 was that it was so fucking awkward switching between your boots and then this and then hookshot and then all that crap. Yes, that was annoying. And on the, on the, on the 3DS, um, they kind of made that easier. You can quick switch, kind of. Yeah. So, so it's much easier to actually do the Water Temple. But yeah, it's still... It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's being still serious, bit. though... Um, there is one level in Dishonored that I absolutely hate where you wake up in the slums and there's a bunch of assassins around you and they kind of have special abilities as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, just that level is so frustrating because people will just spawn right on top of you and teleport over to you and they see you when they're not supposed to uh, and they make you walk up a staircase but there's always somebody looking down the staircase from one end and somebody's always watching the corridor from another so you ha- it, it's like almost pixel perfect teleports in some areas uh, it, it just it feels like it's made to be punishing it's so late in the game that you, you don't want to part. lose your investment in it, so you don't want to put the controller down. You want mm-hmm. to push through it, but at the same time, it angers you so much. That sounds more like a borderline poorly designed level rather than a level designed to be difficult. If you're having that many, like, with the spawn stuff. and Do you know what I mean? Yeah, could be. I can't. Oh, I like Dishonored. I don't remember there being a frustrating level. I can't picture that level you're talking about right now. It, um... I can't remember. I'll, I'll probably remind you when uh, when I run yeah, through the, send the Yeah, okay. Send a link in the chat or something. I'd like to see that. 
Mm. Cool, cool. All right. Well, we're getting close to the end of our podcast. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has any other questions for us. Uh, pretty calm today. Um, one cool thing that I did read in the news, um, we have a Canadian uh, company here called The Score. Uh, they make The Score app. And something that's really cool is they're actually going to be making an app that follows esports, like you know, giving you stats straight up, like you would go and look for like your Hab stats or your your Toronto Maple Leaf stats or that kind of stuff, right? So uh, I think that's going to be pretty cool. I actually tracked that down on Mashable. None of the other uh, companies, you know, big gaming companies have have mentioned anything about that yet, and uh, I'm pretty stoked. I can't wait to download that because I've been trying to really get into esports lately. I'm sure Simon is really excited about it because he <laughs> loves to follow esports. Yeah, of course. It's going to be fun. Well, I mean, I only saw that it came out for Android. I didn't see iOS. So that mm. kind of bummed me out because I only have an iPhone. But mm. we'll see. If it comes out for iOS, uh, I'll definitely give it a shot. I'm, a, <laughs> I, I'm interested to see the kind of stats that they're going to put there. How would you feel if they started making like putting more esports on TV? Like we watched during the X Games, they were supposed to broadcast some of it. I didn't really see any of the uh, Counter Strike Go stuff um, on TV, and actually, I was watching a fair amount of the snowboarding and uh, motocross, but on skidoos. I don't know what you would call snowcross. I guess we were watching a fair am amount of that at my house, and uh, I didn't actually see any any live uh, video game stuff. That'd be kind of cool to have a channel that was totally dedicated uh, on TV to uh, to esports, but I guess we kind of have that with Twitch. So mm, yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Mm. Yeah, TV's not that big anymore in the sense like I don't have cable here. Fuck, like, everything's online. I rip shit yeah. off the internet. So yeah, most most well not most, but a lot of of, of gamers same. I don't have cable. Like all, all yeah. I all I watch is online. So it would be cool. Yeah. I don't think it's mainstream enough for it to be there. Maybe in fifteen yeah. twenty years when all the old stupid execs who want to put poker on an RDS die, and then the new young one can come in, and then they can start putting maybe video games and that kind of stuff on, on Sports Channel, but I don't see it happening anytime soon right now. Unless mm -hmm. they prove me wrong. I hope they do, but I don't know. I, I don't think it's just there yet. The only thing is, is by doing it, by putting it on TV, I think it actually gives it that, it, it validifies it, you know? It gives it that yeah. kick that say, like, this is legit now. I mean, we watch well, friggin' poker on TV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I mean, I think that it's true. It's 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 one point, but also it's stupid. But the prize money at the end, how big is it? Like, how much money can you make being a professional gamer? And mm -hmm. we're almost at the point where you can. Well, right now we're already there. That if you're a pro player, you can easily live and make you know not as much money as an athlete, but almost make as much money as an athlete. You know, you have some Korean StarCraft players who make millions of dollars a year, and I know that's not the norm, but I think I think that we're close. We're almost there. For that, we're close. But for mainstream support, I'm not sure we're there yet. Mm. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I don't, cool. I don't see the point of putting shit on TV anymore, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, same here. I'm, I'm, just, I am the worst media employee ever. I work for a radio station <laughs> and a TV channel, and when they're like... Let's talk about the future of TV, and I'm like dead. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, you lost me at future of TV. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think, the, the internet, I, Devin. <laughs> I think esport, like it, it has its place on TV while TV is there, but I don't think TV is a viable model in general for the next five years. So I think, like, really, Twitch and streaming platforms are the way to go mm -hmm. honestly so they should i think esport needs to invest massively into twitch and really like mm -hmm. go with broadcasting and hope the sport channels follow but like seriously what's going to rds be in five years yeah mm. you mm. don't know you don't know yeah with that being said, I think it's about time to close out the podcast. It's been great. Um, just an upcoming programming note. Next week, Kath, SD, and I have an event to go to on Monday night. So we're either going to be moving the podcast back a day or ahead a day. We will let you know. Um, but yeah, it's like right smack dab in the middle of the event. And it's like something we really want to go to. It's the um, Steve. How do you pronounce his last name, Catherine? Wozniak. Or, Wozniak. There oh, you go. Yeah. yeah, he's coming to talk in Montreal. Co-founder we of Apple. We mm -hmm. kind of want to go see him talk because he might have something interesting to say. So, pardon, pardon, Catherine? 
Plus they feed us. Plus they feed. Yeah, that helps. We we Free like food. We like Catherine's food. there. Yeah, we like food. <laughs> Um, also, upcoming in the next few weeks, um, there's going to be a Friday night game night. Uh, the girls are coming down because uh, I'm having a birthday. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be streaming the whole thing on Twitch, so we might be killing each other by the end of it after playing some Mario Party. Because apparently <laughs> it breaks up friendships. But we will be, uh, you know, having drinks, playing some games. Um, if you have any suggestions of what we should play, i um, going to try and throw some retro stuff in there, some current stuff. We'll see how it goes. Um, and I think that's about it. So I want to thank everybody for listening and viewing and, and, you know, taking part in our podcast today. If you want to learn more about Girls on Games, you can find us at girlsongames.ca. We are on Twitter at the Girls on Games, on Facebook at Girls on Games, and on Instagram at Girls on Games. Nice and simple. All right. Thank you so much for joining in, and we will see you all next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. No. Ciao. Not same time. It's not oh, true. Not, not same You're time. lying. You just went through this, Leah. <laughs> Damn, Damn it. Another bad time and same bat channel. How's that? Yeah, it's close right. enough. It's good. Works. How right, quickly I guys. forget. The blonde is supposed to be fake, but okay. whatever. Anyways, see ya. <laughs> Bye. Take care, y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.